Evening all, and welcome to episode 55 of Kerbalism. We start today's episode out with a launch. A launch of this vehicle designed to take hydrogen to our orbital refinery because, well, last time I gave it the wrong type of hydrogen, this time it's got the correct type of hydrogen. So hopefully this will be able to get our wonderful liquid fuel and oxygen process started. And finally, after a lot more maneuvering than I expected, we are here. Um, I didn't quite get the rendezvous right, so I had to go round and round. And also, I only got the one antenna on the little probe that was coming in, so I kept losing contact with the KSC back on Kerbin. However, now we are here. We have brought hydrogen, lots of hydrogen with us. It's already going down for some reason. Um, Let's uh, let's start everything, shall we? And see what happens. That's running. That's running. That's running. And that's running. There we are. And our hydrogen is dropping. But are we getting? I, I think we are, yes we are, we're getting, uh, that's going up slowly, and that's going up slowly. No, hold on, that's total. Uh, so we're getting oxidizer, we're not getting liquid fuel. I'm not quite sure what's... What's doing this then? I, I think I need to go back to the drawing board a little bit and have a look at what I'm doing wrong here because we're doing hydrogen. Ah, that is unless a different tank is being filled. Um, yes, it looks as if this one is being filled. So, um, we want to empty out those two. We don't want anything in that one there. Uh, let's me table cross feed. There we are. Uh, no, I, I said disable crossfeed. Um, yeah, okay. Um, maybe I'm going to have to increase the fuel flow of this one. Does that do the job? Well, it appears to want to fill up the tank at the top first. Which, uh, I suppose is okay. Um, why not? We could refill the miner and it can go and get some more bits and pieces. Although, for some reason, the oxidizer is going down and liquid fuel is going up. Which is extremely, extremely confusing. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Now we got the oh. I don't understand what's going on here. I'll be quite honest with you, I don't quite understand what's going on with it, but we are producing oxidizer and liquid fuel now. This is working, albeit very slowly. So, um, yes, for the moment, this is okay. I am going to go back to Kerbin and have a look at this process and see, see what I'm doing right and wrong. I, I think I need to rebuild something that's just visually easy to see the exact process happening. And now for something a little bit different. This is a visualization of the process of converting water into liquid fuel and oxidizer. Uh, I have here a tank full of water. Um, all the other tanks are empty, you can see, um, with the exception of the carbon dioxide one here. But the process is quite simple. The water runs into a chemical plant or an ISRU or whichever you're using. And um, we start that, it gets converted into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen and oxygen is then taken in a that process there that I'm not gonna try and completely ruin. And uh, by clicking that, that gets converted into oxidizer. However, the hydrogen is also taken by this chemical plant here 
in the saboteur process, saboteur process, I'm probably pronouncing these all wrong, uh, along with carbon dioxide, and that is converted into liquid fuel. So you are using hydrogen twice, which as you can see, means the hydrogen runs out fairly quickly. Uh, this chemical plant also produces water as an offshoot from that process, so that can be filling this back up here. It's, it doesn't produce more water than you get back, so your water does drop down, but not as quickly as it would do if you didn't have that running. Uh, the oxygen has dropped to zero, and well, that's now going to start filling because this process would have stopped because we're out of hydrogen. Here we are, no more oxidizer, but our liquid fuel is going up. I'm not sure why the liquid fuel takes priority, it always does. I don't know why, I just, this one appears to have a higher priority um, than that. Uh, so, I've got a second chemical plant here, uh, which is set to water, and if I enable that, um, we'll then be using twice as much water, but we should actually be able to produce, I see the oxygen has, it's ticking up very slowly, but we're producing oxidizer and liquid fuel. You need four of these chemical plants to actually get this system running smoothly. You need two breaking the water down into hydrogen and oxygen, and then each one creating the liquid fuel and the oxidizer. Uh, oxidizer is made a lot quicker than liquid fuel. Um, a lot quicker. It's it's almost like five times faster, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, these tanks are both the same, just set to either one. That's contained 200. That can also contain 200. So uh, I know rockets use more oxidizer than liquid fuel. I'm not sure the ratio of that, but yes. So um, uh, as you see, we've used uh, barely 20, um, probably 30, uh, about 30 units of carbon dioxide. That's quite low. It, it's a very efficient process. Um, it will take a long time to burn through all that. And uh, that 51 points of water is probably enough to fill these two tanks, I think. I'm not sure. Um, our batteries are running low. So I'm going to bring up the cheat menu and uh, oh, infinite electricity. I did turn it on already. Hmm. How strange. Oh, well, um, yeah, that, that's the process of it. Um, these are slow. Really, really slow. It's... Um, uh, it's stopped. That's very odd. No infinite electricity. And then turn it on again. Infinite electricity, please. Come on, you can do it. How strange. Oh, well, that's not the point to this. Anyway, um, yes, this is very slow. I, I think that one would fill up both of these, but it would take a day to get 200 units maybe more I, I think I figured out it was about roughly a hundred days to fill an orange tank with my moon base which has got it's actually it's inefficient because it's got a sort of one of these to each one of these so it's not going to be doing properly but um yeah it's going to take about a hundred days so to fill those four fuel tanks at the bottom over a year that's not good enough that really is not good enough the other uh converters do produce things faster um i think the k and k one is the fastest one in the little test i've done i've been doing quite a bit of testing here but um this was the easiest way for me to show you you know from the top down you can see got the arrows there the exact process how it works so yes it's uh that was just very useful for me and i thought it might be useful for you but yes that's how it works um i'm not really sure what to do about this to be honest with you because I would need an army of these. I would need an absolute, like, I, I need sort of 20 of them and 10 of each of these to produce enough liquid fuel to do it. But the power consumption would be horrendous. Absolutely mad. So, yeah, I'm not really sure how to do that. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll turn infinite electricity back off and um, I will add a solar panel to this and I'll be right back. So we're back, we have a solar panel. Um, the big grid is still there. Uh, I just think the weight of the solar panel has pushed it through the ground, which uh, actually makes it look quite cool. I quite like that. It's, um, yeah, it's hiding away there, but it is still there. But 
what I was getting at. Here we go. Um, we are currently using 0 0.03 electric charge um, because of the probe. We've got a little probe there. So if I enable all of these, so if I enable that, enable that, um, the power one got because they've got nothing to do. That's a good thing. They don't use power when there's nothing happening. But if I enable these two and get all four of them running, we jump to 1.53, which may not seem like a lot, actually. Um, probably isn't a lot, actually. I think that, that solar panel is going to be enough to, to do that. Let's see, turn that around, and uh, yep, that is 67%. Uh, sorry, it's 65% uh, exposure, and uh, that's enough to run this process. So that's good um but obviously clearly during the day at night time this would die you could add more batteries to it i i know that so maybe they're not that bad on electric uses they're just slow really really slow um it's about 0 0.1 liquid fuel liquid fuel uh per minute so and that's roughly five times faster um, so let me bring up my trusty calculator because my brain is not going to be bothering to do that um, at, at so we've got 200 um, times 0 0.01 um, is not the calculation I want to be doing is it No, 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 it's 200 divided by, um, oh, just try to divide by zero there, oh, could have destroyed the universe, look at that, right, um, so that's 20,000 minutes, divided by 60, that's, uh, 333 hours, I think my maths is wrong there, I'm doing something wrong here, and I know I am, I can't think what it is, um, Yeah, I'm doing something wrong here. I don't know what it is, but yes. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be 333 hours to fill up 200. It could be. I mean, it could be. Um, if I divided that by six, that's 55 and a half couple days to fill up those two tanks. That's providing this could run 24 hours a day. And these produce heat. I don't think they're going to overheat at all. Uh, but they may do in space because obviously they've got no atmosphere to it. Uh, I'm... I'm not sure of the exact mechanics of this, but if I'm, I'm going to double check the, that maths there to make sure my brain's not failing, but yeah, if that's going to be 55 Kerbin days to fill up that, um, an orange shore tank's got a lot more. So my original calculation of a hundred days to fill that up. Yeah. I think that calculation is based off the fact that I've already got a huge supply of hydrogen I've sent up to the station. That's at full whack. Um, you can see we, we are gaining a little bit of oxygen. Uh, we've used a little bit of carbon dioxide and barely used any water. It is very efficient. I do like that. But it's just not really speedy enough. You, you, you would need an army of these. So um, let me try and figure out what it would do to fill up one of these in, let's say, a single Kerbin day. So I have no idea how this part's going to record because I'm getting mad frame rate lag here. But um, after lots more reading and lots more mucking about with things, trying to do things, and um, the wonderful information that Chris Evans has left in the comments to the last video, thank you very much for that. That's been very helpful. Um, the Convertitron 250 are about five times more efficient than the chemical plant. Plus, they can do two things at once. So, um, I've got them doing um, the water incinerator, which can produce carbon dioxide from burning waste. So, that's something that can be done. But, um, yeah, in order to figure out um, the filling up a tank... This one here to get 200 units of fuel something this size um that little thing down there go down 
it down. There we are. To fill up that with liquid fuel, um, if it was just on liquid fuel, there we are. To fill it up to 200, you would need 36 of the um, Convertitrons doing the process to make liquid fuel. I can never remember which one's which, but yeah, you need 36 of them. Which means you would need 72 Convertitrons converting water into hydrogen and oxygen. That is what 72 of them looks like. And I am getting mad lag here. I'd need to add another row of these in front and convert them to do um, both because the Convertitrons can do two at once. So I could have them converting liquid fuel and oxidizer at the same time. So that would cut down a little bit. But I need another row of them. And uh, I can't launch this anyway. It's too heavy. It's 346 tons as it is. It's going to be sort of touching the 450 ton mark by the time it's done. And uh, I don't even know what the power drain would be on them. It, it's mad. And all of that would be, with another row of these as well, to fill up that one tank in one Kerbal day. That's it. 200 units of liquid fuel in one Kerbin day. Bearing in mind, did it take more than that to land on the moon from moon orbit, I believe? Let me quickly check the map here. Low orbit to the surface is 640 meters a second required. And then the same again to get back up. So 1,080, which means you would need uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, five, and a bit of those. So it would take you five, six Kerbin days, shall we say, to get enough fuel to go from low moon orbit to the moon, pick up the water and come back in. That's assuming the water's already for you and you don't have to mine it for the next 10 years to get it there. This whole process with Kerbalism is ridiculously slow. It's it's not worth doing. The default settings for Kerbalism, it's not worth doing. It's, it's the first thing I can honestly say that I don't like about Kerbalism. So, as Chris Nod has pointed out in the comments, there is a way to change it. You can edit the profile to make it faster. That may seem like cheating, but bear in mind, um, as he's put up there as well, the default Convertitron 250s, these ones here, would normally convert ore into liquid fuel at a rate of 54 a minute, which makes them 5,400 times more efficient in the default game than the way Kerbalism does. I get losing a little bit because you've got to jump through hoops and do different things to do with it, but 5,000% worse? 5,000 times worse? What? That's mad. So, um, yes, I will be taking the suggestion that Chris Heaven says here and I will be editing my Kerbalism profile to increase the rate at which liquid fuel goes. I don't think it's kind of cheating because you do rather than just put ore in and get fuel out you have to jump through the hoops you have to put ore in you have to put water in break it down do the other things blah blah, blah this and the other so yes I, I just think i'm going to edit it to make it to make it make more sense this is a game it's not supposed to be realistic it's supposed to be fun And so, many hours later, I am back with a custom Kerbalism profile. Making your own profile is fairly straightforward. Tweaking the numbers to make sure everything balances is not. Uh, you've got to change your numbers, come into the game, test them, quit the game, change your numbers, come into... It's the loading times. They are... They're, yeah. It takes a while to do, but um, yes, it's been well, four hours, uh, just under, since my last recording, and um, I've done nothing but edit the files, load, and do this little test one. I uh, shrunk this down a little bit because it's um, uh, well, the other one for some reason I had issues with it, and uh, then I discovered it was because I broke the profile. But anyway, we've got this one now, and um, this has exactly the same system on it, slightly arranged differently, uh, with the exception of a big orange tank because this is what I've been using for all my testing. I've leveled out the way liquid fuel and oxidizer is made based on how much is in here. There is 
two, three times the amount of oxidizer than there is of liquid fuel. So the oxidizer creator, this one here, makes 1.23 the amount of this one for the liquid fuel. So the system's all gonna be fair and straight. Um, I've boosted the numbers up by about 10, 10 or 100. One of the two, I can't remember. I think it might be 100 actually. So um, it produces stuff faster. It does also use up water faster as well. Um, I decided to adjust that as well to make sure that I wasn't essentially cheating. I wasn't going to get more fuel and oxidizer for the same amount of water. That would just be wrong. So um, uh, I've started this here. I've balanced everything based on these chemical plants and have kind of realized that the other ISRUs or Convertitrons, they, um, they do things faster. These are the slowest of everything. So um, if I want to build a bigger station with fast ones, I can just be, use the other one. So yeah, this is this is pretty good. But um, yeah, uh, we've also got a little launch clamp here because um, if I just drop this on the runway with the legs, the counter never starts. So didn't know how long it was taking to do things. But um, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, all the tanks are empty again, as you can see, with the exception of the carbon dioxide there and the water. And uh, I'm going to drop this off unlock the water so it can start running and uh, accelerate time see how long we go before night time will come before we actually get anywhere but that we should get a decent amount of fuel about 200 ish of each one and um yeah i think you'll you'll see the numbers as they go There we are, two and a half hours later, turn that off there. Uh, we've used 225 water, and we have about 200 oxidizer and 161 liquid fuel. That I feel is much better. To get the 161 liquid fuel would have taken days, days upon days on the, on the old settings. It's, um, yeah, it would have taken probably um, I, I think I figured out it was going to be a hundred days to fill it up with the old setup I had um, on the station, uh, the, the the moon re, moon refinery. Sorry, that doesn't use chemical plants. That does use the conversatrons, so it would be a bit faster. But um, yeah, now it's going to take sort of ten days to fill one of these up, but use a lot more water. So I'm going to be going backwards and forwards to the moon a lot more often. So that that's okay. That I kind of like that. Uh, half of these, one of these um, orange tanks is the fuel required to get to the surface of the moon and back again. So, yeah, it's going to be about half that to go there. We also need to send up some way of making mono repellent because we're going to run out of that otherwise. But the most important thing is keeping an eye on the water. I obviously don't want to use it all up and then my curb will die. That would be a really dumb thing. You can use scripts, of course. You can... Um, use this here the automation so I could quite happily say um, uh, I suppose when uh, power low power high shadow sunlight space um, I've actually got one for water that's a little annoying um, oh well so maybe I can't use scripts for that but it doesn't matter we this is producing um, liquid fuel and oxidizer a lot lot better so yeah this is what i'm gonna go with um i think this is sort of the way ahead it, it is changing the way the profile works slightly i will share my profile um the little way how to do it uh chris nod obviously showed me how to um initially change the settings there but i I didn't want to use the ones that he suggested because yes they would have brought everything up in level with the old Kerbal system of ore to liquid fuel but I would then have to change it, it to balance it out with the water it would have drained this whole water down in less than a day used the whole whole water thing in less than the carbon day so it has to be taking daily trips to the moon to refill and come back up again and that's um 
that's all right because I could have built a bigger spaceship to do it and got more liquid in one go but then using more fuel and it's all sort of it's time to effort I don't mind it taking sort of a week or so to fill one of these fuels up here the, these tanks up here because well I mean how often are you going to go and refuel the ship it's not going to be every day at least not at the moment um, when we get to that sort of stage where we're sending many many ships up and they need refueling over and over we'll have a bigger process going on here we'll have we'll have something something more so um yeah this is the system um let's go to the refinery around the moon and have a look how it works there Well, here we are at the moon refinery and you can clearly see this is producing a lot more liquid fuel and oxidizer than the um, one we had before. Uh, it does use these convertitrons, but it has only got two producing oxygen and hydrogen and four using it, technically. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how this is going to go. I mean, the carbon dioxide is already dropping. Oxygen shouldn't really be a problem for the minute because we did have two very large tanks. I think the main issue here is going to be um, using up all the water and the kerbals dying. That's going to be the biggest problem, I think. I need a way to kind of stop them from that so if I was to lock that one out there and uh, yeah I think that's already disabled isn't it uh, disable cross feed so you can't use that one there please there we go. we've got liquid fuel and oxidizer there let's refill our uh, um, lander in and in Well, we need a bit more oxidizer first, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll turn off the water supply there. So if I do get any errors of something coming along, uh, I can always un, un, I can open that up again, and uh, they'll have water to drink. I can turn off these two processes here and just have this break down the oxygen into water and hydrogen. So we've always got way to produce water. We do have a fair amount of oxygen. Um. Oh, actually, no, to the line. That would break down water and produce oxygen. And uh, that's all. I think it's... I can't remember which one it is. One of these does have an offset of producing water. I think the say, Sabatier one does. It's, um, I'm probably pronouncing that word very wrong. And I'm not even attempting that one. So, um, yeah. The oxidizer process, I believe, produces water. So, yeah, provided we've got oxygen and hydrogen, which uh, we've got plenty of hydrogen there, loads of stuff. Um, yeah, provided we got that, we can um, obviously keep this station going. It's, it's, it's going to be good. So, uh, um, let's have a quick look here, shall we? Uh, it says we've got two days of water left at our current usage, 11 days of oxygen left. Um, and hydrogen is 22 days. I'm not sure why hydrogen's offset there, but um, uh, yeah. So the two days of water is obviously because we are using up water, and uh, well, we could stop doing that, and it would you know, still go. I can't just sort of stop these and leave these running because uh, I, as I said, I think they still take the water even though there's nowhere to put the hydrogen or oxygen. Once they be they're fill, full, they would still just use up all the water. So yeah, can't really do that sort of thing there, but um, yeah. Yeah, overall, I'm happy with them changes. I'm, I'm satisfied with that there. I, I don't, I, I know I've said it a lot before, but I want to try and justify the whole cheating thing. I, I want to always make sure that it's, uh, it doesn't seem overly cheaty or there's a reason for doing the changes and the reason for doing these changes was that I don't want to wait uh, over a Kerbal over a year a, a Kerbal year 
for those tanks to fill up down there. That's that's madness. That's utter madness. It just doesn't make a refinery worth it. It's it's completely pointless. You might as well send fuel up from Kerbin. So um Yeah, that's that's my reasoning behind this. So uh um little probe down there, I forgot about that. Yes, that's happy there. Uh the moon orbital refinery, yes one here, is obviously suffering from radiation. Um I didn't put any shielding on it at all. Ironically I did put shielding on here. Um which uh I have more shielding than is actually allowed. That's extremely interesting. Hmm. Um, this is a fused part. It's got two food containers either end uh, linked to it. It's um, a welded part, so I think something might have gone a bit weird there. But um, uh, but no. Importantly, I didn't actually put any shielding on the the craft that the kerbals would go into. So um. Yeah, if we have a solar storm happen, I think I'm going to have to basically drop these into this pod and drop them on the dark side of the moon. That's going to be the only way to sort of make them survive. Um, I will be sending another craft up here because I want to get rid of all these probes, these relays in orbit. Uh, I'm going to trash them all or, or I might send a ship up and try and grab them and uh, do something with them. And I'm going to put in a relay network. Um, of four or five probes that just that, that can relay things properly that can do a, a better job of what I've done here so um, and I may do the same with Nimbus because we've got we've got lots of trash flying around and I want to do that so um yeah I think that's probably the next thing to look at and uh hopefully we won't get a solar flare anytime soon but um well, as soon as this has produced some more fuel, I think we shall go down and uh, fill up the water. Ah, that's one other thing I did do. I did modify the drills. They now grab water uh, 10 times faster, I think, 100 times faster. Whatever I set this, this converter to, I did the same numbers for that one there. So um, everything was times the same amount, so it was all even. So um, they will grab water a lot quicker as well, which... Um, I just thought it was better because it would take like, months to fill this water tank up down there and that just I don't know I, I suppose it, um Kerbal isn't real life I know that but I suppose there's reasoning behind that somewhere there's got to be some logical thinking behind that Kerbalism ex sort of sort itself out very well to be quite logical in its usage but yeah, that's just, it's too slow. It's too slow. For gameplay-wise, it's too slow. So, um, yep, that's that's why the change has happened. And, uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. And uh, I hope, hope that you are too. And that's where we shall leave it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. And I hope to see you again in the next one. And until then, as always, have fun.